Hello and welcome to the API testing fundamentals. Hope you must have watched the Codeless Automation Tools Fundamentals and Codeless Tools list. If not, please watch them by clicking on link given above or in the description. These are amazing knowledge imparting videos, don't miss. Well, APIs have become the focal point of programming improvement, interfacing and transferring information and rationale across frameworks and applications. Fortunately, testing them can enormously improve the productivity of your testing procedure overall, helping you convey programming quicker than at any other time. API is the acronym for Application Programming Interface, which is a software intermediary that allows two applications to talk to each other. Each time you use an app like Facebook, send an instant message, or check the weather on your phone, you're using an API. An Application Programming Interface API, at its core is a formal specification that acts as a guaranteed contract between two separate pieces of software. We can also define API as an interface between two software applications by allowing them to communicate with each other. API testing is a software testing type that validates application programming interfaces APIs. The purpose of API testing is to check the functionality, reliability, performance, and security of the programming interfaces. Applications often have three layers, data layer, service API layer, presentation UI layer. API testing involves testing the application programming interfaces APIs for functionality, security, performance. Since APIs lack a GUI, API testing is performed at the service layer. Let's talk about the testing types in API testing. Unit testing is for testing the usefulness of individual activity. UI testing is for testing the usefulness of UI as a component of start to finish. Functional testing is simply a test of specific functions within the code base. Load testing, for testing the functionality and execution under load conditions. Load testing takes on a few different scenarios in order to ensure peak performance. The first of these scenarios is called the baseline, and tests the API against the theoretical regular traffic the API expects in normal, day-to-day -day usage. Usability testing. It is easy to hit the APIs on different platforms and test the usability of a software. Error detection, for recognizing any blunders, for example, special cases and asset spills. This type of test is focused on the actual running of the API. Other tests are concerned with the result of implementing the API in a scenario. Error detection is concerned with the universal results of utilizing the API codebase. These types of tests have one of the following focuses, monitoring, execution errors, resource leaks, error detection. Security testing also includes penetration testing and fuzz testing. Interoperability and WS compliance testing applies to SOAP APIs and checks for following two aspects. Interoperability between SOAP APIs is checked by ensuring conformance to the web services interoperability profiles. By conforming to these guidelines and utilizing these tests, interoperability between SOAP APIs can be confirmed. Secondly, WS compliance is tested to ensure standards such as WS addressing, WS discovery, WS Federation, WS Policy, WS Security, and WS Trust are properly implemented and utilized. Discovery testing helps in identifying APIs where the resources are not exposed. Infiltration testing is for identifying any vulnerabilities of an application from aggressors. API testing best practices can be counted as 1. Deciding what to test and what not. 2. Use realistic data. 3. Don't repeat yourself. 4. Write clear tests that easily enable debugging. 5. Design the tests to run under different suit configuration options. 6. Test positive and negative outcomes. 7. Use data to drive dynamic assertions. 8. Track API responses. 9. Test the API for failures, until you get the output as failed. 10. Reuse test cases and monitor the API in production. Step 1 is to create API testing requirements. To be able to plan API tests, we need to answer following questions. Determine testing boundaries and requirements. Purpose of the API. 
workflow of the application, features and functions of the API and definition of pass and fail. Step 2 is to establish the API test environment. After the functional scope, the next step is setting up an API test environment. Step 3 is to make a trial API call. Before starting the testing, perform a sanity test. Step 4 is to define the input parameters. Plan all possible input combinations to verify the results to determine whether the API performs as expected. Step 5, Create API Test Cases. After all the preparations are done, it's the time to write and execute test cases followed by compare actual results with the expected ones. Examples of API test cases may include positive and negative test values to check the response is passed or failed. When there is no return value in response. Verification of response after data structure updates. Validating resources modified by the API call. Let's learn some important API testing terminologies. 1. XML XML stands for Extensible Markup Language. It's a markup language much like HTML. XML was designed to be self-descriptive. It has sender information and receiver information, heading and message body. 2. WSDL stands for Web Services Description Language. It's an XML format that tells you how to access a web service. Used to describe web services. Written in XML. 3. SOAP stands for Simple Object Access Protocol. It helps in exchanging structured information between computer networks. It allows communication between different operating systems using XML. 4. SOA SOA, service-oriented architecture, is a way in which companies can organize software that can be quickly changed to respond to the requirements of the marketplace. 5. REST REST stands for Representational State Transfer. These are web services that provide interoperability between computer systems over the Internet. The main differences between SOAP and REST are, SOAP stands for Simple Object Access Protocol, whereas REST stands for Representational State Transfer. SOAP is a protocol, whereas REST is an architectural style. Web services following SOAP principles are called SOAP web services whereas web services following REST architectural style are called RESTful web services. SOAP message request is processed slower as compared to REST. SOAP supports only XML data format. Whereas REST supports data formats like plain text, XML, HTML, JSON, etc. The main differences between API and web services are. All web services are APIs. Whereas all APIs are not web services. Web services can only be hosted on ease whereas APIs can be hosted within an application or ease. Web services are not open source but APIs are open source. Web services require a SOAP protocol to receive and send data over the network, so a lightweight architecture whereas APIs are lightweight architecture. A web service uses only three styles of use, SOAP, REST and XML RPC for communication. API may use any style of communication. Web services only supports the HTTP protocol, whereas API supports the HTTP protocol, URL, request slash response headers, caching, versioning, content formats. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation and was designed to be a lightweight data interchange format. JSON is definitely becoming more popular and is now replacing XML in certain situations for API data exchanging. JSON is built on two structures, 1. A collection of name-value pairs. 2. An ordered list of values. SOAP message has following three elements, 1. The SOAP envelope is always the top element in the message. 2. The header is optional and is the first child element to appear after the envelope. Headers can contain different types of application-specific information like security authentication or session management info. 3. Body, sometimes referred to as the payload, the body contains the actual message that shows the information for the recipient of the message. Now oh, let's take a look on commonly used HTTP methods. 1. The HTTP GET method is used to retrieve data. 
it is a read-only call and data cannot be modified. If it is a successful request, without any errors, then a status of code of 200 OK, is received along with the data requested in the particular format which is generally JSON or XML. Git method is considered a safe method to call as no corruption or modification of data will be done. 2. The HTTP POST method is a write method. It is mainly used to create a new resource by providing the input in JSON or XML format. When a POST request is made, a new resource is created with the values provided along with it. If it is an error-free call, the status returned will be 201. These methods are not idempotent and thus can result in errors or duplicate records if called more than one time. 3. The HTTP PUT method is like an update command. It is used to change the value of any resource whose original value was something else. Put methods can also be used to create resources but only if the request is from the client and not the server. If we call the same put request again then no changes are made means it is idempotent. 4. The HTTP delete method, as the name suggests, is used to delete a resource. If the request is made successfully then the status code returned is 200 OK. These are also idempotent as if a resource is deleted once it cannot affect it. There are standard HTTP response codes which you can read through below. They include informational codes, success codes, redirect codes, client error codes and server error codes. Some of the most common HTTP response codes used with REST are as follows. 200, OK. 201, created. 400, bad request. 401, unauthorized. 405, method not allowed. 409, conflict. And 500, internal server error. The benefits of API testing are, early testing. Easier test maintenance. Faster time to resolution. Speed and coverage of testing. Not only these, benefits of API testing also include being language independent, easy integration with GUI, cost effective and better coverage. Having the right process, tool and solution for API test are critical for success. Below are the tools which are quite popular in API testing space, tools like Postman, SOAP UI REST Assured, Swagger, JMeter and Catalon Studio are quite popular in API testing space we will see a list of API testing tools in next video where we LLC some different API testing tools other than the popular ones. API based applications have gained popularity in recent times. It is now an integral part of the quality assurance process. We just need the right approach and tool to improve the testing outcomes. The more our testing process is structured, the better will be the outcome of the testing. Hope this video is able to add something new to your existing knowledge of API testing. If so, please like, share, subscribe and comment so that we are motivated enough to come up with such knowledge sharing videos. Thanks for watching. See you soon.